All right, I ended the last video. We have a nice integral for some funky charge objects, some continuous charge distribution. And I said, yeah, the integral is good, but really you have to uh, modify it depending on the special case that you're trying to integrate over. So now we're going to go through some special cases. And we're going to do the same ones that are in the book. These are the general ones. These are the ones that are easier to start with. And the first one we're going to do is a, a line of charge, OK? OK, a line of charge is a one-dimensional problem, just like it sounds like, OK? So a line, one-dimensional. Uh, this line of charge is uh, all the charge, basically, is in a line. It doesn't have to be a straight line, as I'll show. Okay. Um, and it has to have a continuous charge distribution. Okay. Which basically means to do this integral, you have to be able to describe how that charge changes along the line with a equation. If you can't do it with a single equation, you're going to have to break that line up uh, into multiple lines of charge that can be described with an equation, and you're going to have to do a separate integral for each, okay? But that's practically how you do it. We're not going to worry about that type of complexity right now. You might be like, why do we care about lines of charge? Why am I learning this? Well, uh, this type of integral is useful uh, for understanding Okay, the electric field of wires and cables, okay, which is fairly common thing to have to do. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so let's think about what this looks like practically. Let's draw a little line. Again, I said it didn't have to be a straight line. There's our line. And I want to figure out what the electric field is at some point, okay, up here above the line. Okay, so I'm trying to find, I'm going to do a different color here. I'm trying to find the field due to the line. Okay, here. And a lot of the problems that you guys do, they're going to be that specific. I want you to find the electric field at this point above the line, or at least along this axis uh, above the line. Okay, so what you do is similar to what we talked about before with the funky charged object. I want you to imagine, okay, breaking this line of charge into uh, little chunks. I'll do that in a different color here. Little chunks. So I'm gonna break this line, and again, I'm drawing these chunks kind of like little rectangles, but make them a little bit smaller. I want you to think of them as just little bits of this, this line here, okay? And I'm gonna treat them uh, like DQs. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna figure out what the electric field is due to one of these little guys, okay? Uh, I'm going to figure out what the electric field is at point P due to one of those little guys, and then I'm going to do the next one, and 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 I'm going to superimpose all those little electric fields due to each little chunk of this line together at point P to figure out what the total electric field is, okay? Of course, you could do this with a sum, right? I could sum them all, boop, 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 boop. but the more precise way to do it is to shrink those little chunks that I sh uh, took from this line infinitesimally small, and instead of doing a sum and to superimpose the electric field from each of these little chunks, we're going to do an integral, okay? That's what we want to think about when we're doing this. Okay, so how do we actually do this? Well, it's going to look a lot like what we did before. Again, I need to, uh, in order to figure out uh, what the electric field is, which is a little better, what the electric field is due to a little chunk of this line at point P, 
it depends on how far that little chunk of line is from point P because the field is still going to fall off like one over this distance squared. So I still need to define a, a separation vector. Okay. And um, now I just need to kind of figure out how to rewrite my uh, integral here. So I'm going to define something called uh, DL. Okay. DL prime and actually, no, that's fine. DL prime here uh, where I'm going to put that uh, prime on it. Uh, because the line is like the, the line is like the source charge before the line is the source of the field. Okay, so we're trying to stay consistent with the notation in the book, but having these primes help you helps you kind of separate uh, what the source the source charge is. Okay, so this is the source of our electric field. DL is a little chunk of my line, so that's going to have units of meters. Okay. And let me write over here, I've got DL prime is uh, the chunk of length, okay, if we, uh, is a chunk of length. Okay, let me start over again, okay. So if we assume a charge k okay, per unit length of lambda k okay, then i can say right that lambda is going to be equal to dq over dl okay i could also say that d Q would be equal to lambda d L. Okay, so let's think about what this means. What is this lambda? It's a charge per unit length. Okay, so uh, one way to describe the charge of this line is to describe basically like a charge density. How much charge is in a little itty bitty length? For example, how much charge is in a centimeter? length of this particular thing. Well, that's something I could calculate. Uh, if it's uniform, then along this whole thing, I'm going to get the same value for lambda. If it's not uniform and continuous, say there's more charge on this end than there is on this end, then maybe lambda isn't a single number. Maybe it's an equation that describes how the charge density is changing as I go along this line. But either way, I can describe the charge in a little chunk of my line with a, a, a variable called lambda, which is giving me the charge per unit length, okay? So if I wanna know the total charge of my little chunk here that I'm gonna try to calculate the electric field of at point P, what I really need to know is the total charge of that chunk. That total charge is going to be lambda times DL, okay? So, uh, Hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? Again, this should be a little bit of review from what we did in 183, but it's okay if you don't remember it. All right, so how does that help us? Let's go back to our uh, continuous uh, electric field for our continuous charge distribution. Okay, this is what we did in the last lecture. I said it looked something like, oops, getting crazy with my script R's here. It looks like this. What I want to do really is take this bit here and replace it with something that is appropriate for the particular object I'm trying to calculate the electric field of. This is just a little bit of charge in my funky charge object. In this case, it's the little bit of charge right here that I'm trying to calculate the charge of at, at my point P. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rewrite this equation for this particular example, and it's gonna look like, so this is for a line, a little better. Okay, it's gonna look like one over four pi epsilon naught. Now my integral is gonna 
uh, we'll write this one the same here. It's still going to depend on that uh, separation vector. It's still going to have my script r hat in it. But now instead of dq, I'm going to have my lambda times my dl here. Okay. So that's one way to write it. It would be a little bit more common. Let me just rewrite this a little bit different way, like how you'd see it in the book. Okay, the lambda would go over here and the DL would go over here. Okay, but the point of having the lambda in there at all is to have something that you could multiply this DL by. And what we're really getting is a little itty bitty chunk of charge, okay? And when we do the integral, remember what we're doing here is a sum. So really we're doing, we're adding uh, these, this is going to change. This could change, right? This is going to change. Um, when we when we do that, we're adding the electric field as we do this integral along this line from each of these little chunks of charge, and we're adding it uh, what it is at point P. Okay, we'll do an example that will help you uh, understand this. Okay, if I want to write this equation just a little bit more generally, let's do that. Okay, so. Uh, what we're really doing is we're finding the electric field at a specific location, okay? One way I can do that with the notation, let me make sure that this is clear for a line, is just say, hey, I'm finding uh, the electric field at some point R in my coordinate system. This could also, uh, in Cartesian, coordinates look like this, right? That's another way to specify the position, okay, and that's going to be equal to one over four pi epsilon naught. We're gonna do our integral. I said this thing does not have to be constant. It could be an equation, okay, that could depend on where you are along your line, okay? So I put the prime there because the location uh, along the line, right, we're not thinking about the, if I have a coordinate system here, let me draw a little quick one just to give this, make this clear. Okay, here's my coordinate system. This would be, not to confuse it with that other one, this would be my position vector of the point. That would be this R here, okay. But when I'm drawing this other R in the equation, that's the position vector of the line, okay? So that was our R prime, okay? So this charge distribution doesn't have to be uniform. It could depend on the actual position of the line in space with some equation. Okay, and then this is still the separation vector squared, and that's still R hat. And that's still DL, okay? So that gets you to an equation that looks a lot like the one that is in the book, okay? So I hope this makes sense to you guys, uh, where the primes come from, why some are script R, why some are R. If that stuff is not making sense to you at this point, you're gonna get kind of stuck. So now's the time to email me and we'll talk about it to make sure you're understanding. Uh, the notation. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here and we'll do an example. Um, and then we will uh, go on and do some of the other charge distributions.